Hi there, I'm Jim. And I'm Meg. Let's talk teaching. Welcome to Let's Talk Teaching, a podcast from the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology here at Illinois State University. I'm Jim G. Joining me today is Megan Gregory. Meg is a uh, doctoral. Actually, Meg, you're a lot of things. So first of all, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Let's just go. Let's just do the rundown. Uh, first of all, in the interest of full disclosure, you are one of our two doctoral level graduate assistants here at CTLT. Uh, and invaluable in, in how you help us get our mm-hmm. programming uh, out to faculty and staff. You are also... Finishing up your dissertation. Yep, that's right. So hopefully, actually, hopefully this weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, soon. Um, yeah. But I'm a six-year PhD candidate in the English department at Illinois State. Uh huh. And you've been teaching for six or seven years on this campus as well. Yep. Yeah, I was here for my master's degree as well. So I yeah. um, taught in the English department for two years with the master's and five with the PhD. There you go. And you're also teaching a couple other places too, right? Yeah, I am. So I adjunct at um, Lincoln College in Lincoln, Illinois, and through the Abe program at Lincoln and Normal. Um, and then I am also adjuncting at Webster University in St. Louis right now. So you're driving to St. Louis once a week to teach. I am. That's how much I like it. <laughs> Well, that's good. And that's why I wanted to have you on because you have such a unique perspective on teaching. First of all, you're the first graduate assistant or graduate student we've actually had on the show. Not that we've been doing this too long, but in, you know, 20 episodes or so. So I think it's important that we get your perspective. And I think it's actually something that, uh, a lot of faculty members, um, who may have been graduate assistants once upon a time, maybe recently, maybe not so much, but I think that that perspective's, uh, important. And, and I think it's always good. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it this way. I think it's always good that we raise the level of conversation about the important contribution that graduate teaching assistants make to student learning on our campus, um, because there's about 400 of you uh, of, of various uh, in various disciplines who are helping to support student learning. So um, I want to start and just talk about kind of your general thoughts about the difference between the, the teaching environments that you've been in at the different institutions that you're teaching in this semester. Yeah, I mean, on some on some level, I feel really lucky that I've gotten to see three really different kinds of institutions and the mm-hmm. way that, um, you know, the different kinds of students that those institutions draw. Um, so obviously, ISU, I've been um, been teaching here for a little while, but uh, Lincoln, if I teach on Lincoln's campus, it's a lot of um, first generation college students, uh, many from um, Chicago that are moving to central Illinois and in, mm-hmm. in a very different environment than the one that they grew up in. Um, in the aid program, it is mostly continuing um, education uh, students. So it's mostly adult learners that mm-hmm. are, you know, state farm or country um, employees that are also trying to finish their degree along with, you know, working full time and raising a family. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Webster is a small liberal, private liberal arts college, um, so mostly traditional students um, in that situation. And so it's just – it's three very different student populations yeah. um, all in one semester, which is an interesting juggle. It, it, it sounds like it. And are you teaching largely the same subject matter, or what are, what are you teaching? No. Um, I'm, in fact, <laughs> teaching very different things. Uh, so – um, this year, uh, I've taught a couple of um, linguistics courses at Webster. So in the mm-hmm. fall, it was history of English. Uh, right now, I'm teaching intro to linguistics. Um, mm-hmm. And then I taught composition for uh, Lincoln in the fall. And right now, or I just finished um, intro to critical thinking, okay. which is sort of a philosophy course mm-hmm. um, in the aid program. So it's in my area is medieval studies, technically. So okay. it's been... An exercise in teaching things uh, along with uh, learning them this semester. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that, there's there's an advantage to that, or there, mm-hmm. you know, that, there can be a joy in that too. Um, I would imagine sleep may be something that doesn't <laughs> happen as frequently. Sleep. What is sleep? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so even though you're you're kind of addressing different topics with these different mm-hmm. student populations, can you give us an example of maybe how you have to change your approach to teaching based on who you're teaching? Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things that I think I do most often in my teaching is is um, think about how whatever we're doing in that room is transferring to the stu- you know, transferring to other parts of their lives or mm-hmm. other parts of their educational experiences. And 
um, at Webster right now, I have mostly English ed majors that are going to go be secondary teachers. And so that com- returning over and over again to that conversation, okay, what is this going to do for you in the classroom? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do when this is, you know, you have, you have this, your student has this question, how are you going to respond to it? Whereas with, um, say the folks in the AIM program, it's, it's more practical examples often, you know, what kinds of things are you seeing at work that, Mm -hmm. that connect to what we're talking about? Or Mm -hmm. what do you see, you know, in your daily lives? So the kinds of examples or the kinds of, well, the kinds of questions I ask are similar, right? Like how do we connect this? Um, Their answers are very different and, and their approaches as students are really different than at the different places and Mm -hmm. in the different contexts. So uh, have you been surprised in the last semester or two doing all of these different, teaching in all of these different places? Has there been any moment in the classroom that you've really been taken by surprise by the reaction to something or by the the perspective that you're seeing the students um, talking about you didn't expect? I think the early realization that just because an activity or a topic or a text works really well at one place doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work really well with the new stop, you know, population, mm-hmm. um, was something that I learned pretty quickly this fall. Mm-hmm. Um, there were some things that I've taught a number of times at ISU that have worked well and have gone over well that just did not work at Lincoln. Right. They just, the students there are, um, Actually, I think this is a really good thing, but the students are really open to saying, you know, this is, this doesn't, this doesn't reach us. You know, I I had a student slide a paper back at me and say, if you want us to read it, it has to be interesting, Ah. (laughs) Um, which, you know, on one hand is sort of confrontational, but on the other, like, there's an openness and a willingness to say, like, this isn't working for us that I really appreciated um, with those students. And it made me really stop and say, oh, like... Okay, Mm -hmm. like, well, let's see what what might work better for you. So um, there's been an adjustment in that way. And I think, although I knew in theory that that was a thing, not every, you know, every, every classroom is different. Um, It was, it, you know, it's sort of, it got real, real, real fast. So So, when it gets real, really fast. Um, do you, uh, were you able to make adjustments during the semester or was it more of a, well, I got to remember that for next time I teach this? Um, a little of both. Okay. Um, I definitely, so the course I was teaching at Lincoln in the fall, um, there were two kind of large units as I had designed them and I definitely made some significant changes in terms of scaffolding, Mm -hmm. um, for the second, um, the second unit. Now explain what you mean by scaffolding for. So, um. I realized that the students needed, um, I, a lot of times I think of it as connective tissue. The students needed more connective tissue between the pieces than what I was giving them. And they needed a clearer sense of what the end result was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They, they needed that kind of reassurance and that guidance as, as we went through. So sometimes it was small things like, Hey, so what we're doing today is going to feed into this larger project in this way. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes it was, um, assigning small pieces as we went. So uh, one of the big components was a lit review. It was a English composition course and um, they had to do a bunch of, you know, it's a research um, focused course. And um, I, instead of having them have some big thing do with the, you know, after working on it for a couple of weeks, I realized that, okay, having small chunks every day Mm -hmm. is much better for this particular population. So I did do some things, um, differently in the second half of the course. And I tried to adjust to what, what they needed from me. Um, but there are also a lot of things that I will um, change the next time around. Sure. So how do you, uh, do you take notes throughout the semester? How do you remember what you need to change at, at when you are doing your next teaching prep? That's a good question. Um, a couple of ways. So one, I always have something with me during class that's sort of like, here's here's what I think is going to happen. Of mm-hmm. course, it's never actually what happens. Right. Um, <laughs> right. uh, but usually uh, after all of the students are gone, I take a couple of minutes and at least jot down a few things or mm-hmm. like, you know, this went well or this took way longer than I thought or this was a terrible idea. I never do this again. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully not that many times um, right. with that last bit, but yeah. sometimes. Um, but I also um, have an electronic copy of the syllabus and the course schedule. Mm-hmm. And as we're going through the semester um, every week, I insert comments into that so that when I go remake the course schedule for the next time, mm-hmm. I have a clear sense of like, this piece really didn't fit or mm-hmm. this piece worked so well, keep it. Well, I think that's good advice. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to do that more. 
I used to take I used to just take notes on the syllabus by hand mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And then I found that I was making too many changes. And then I also found that the syllabus didn't really uh, wasn't really the thing that needed to be changed. And so mm-hmm. I was just actually taking notes about other things, about individual activities and stuff like that. So no, that's great. Um, so coming back to to Illinois State a little bit, um, in addition to everything that we talked about that you're that you're doing right now, you are also uh, a past uh, outstanding uh, graduate teaching award winner, and you are now uh, on the university teaching committee. Mm-hmm. So how has that experience has that impacted your your teaching in any way? I think it's been a really good experience in that. Uh, especially in the reading of um, the portfolios, which is one of the main components of what we do, um, Mm -hmm. is basically getting a chance to see some of the really fantastic teaching that's happening on campus and see ideas from um, a variety of, not just, not just in the English department, but from a variety of fields, Mm -hmm. which has been really, uh, really interesting for me. And I've gotten some, I think, practical ideas for things that I hadn't really thought about or things that I thought, Oh, like I can actually adapt this to what I'm doing. So this, um, one of the things that I'm trying out uh, actually next week is um, an exam wrapper, and I haven't done that before. And oh, I never okay. never thought to do that because mm-hmm. it's, I mean, I don't give exams that much, but for linguistics, that's something I have to do um, or I feel like I should do. But because of looking through other people's materials and seeing, you know, mm-hmm. some of the different activities and some of the ways that they think about teaching for themselves, like, um, you know, has just given me kind of small mm-hmm. ideas that are practical ideas that I'll take with me. That's cool. Um, we we talked about exam wrappers with Julianne um, uh, uh, several episodes ago, so we'll link to that on the show page for today's episode. But briefly, an exam wrapper is uh, it's like a, a, a pre and post test assessment mm-hmm. about how prepared students felt they were for the assessment, right? Yeah. So it's basically an opportunity for self reflection, and I, I mean, I use reflection in my classes all the time. It's something I'm really invested in. Um, but I hadn't really found a way to work it into the linguistics courses in the way that I have in the literature courses So, um, and the composition. So it's a good opportunity for the students to have some time to think about what they did. But it's also an opportunity for them to tell me what I can, you know, mm-hmm. try to adjust to help their, you know, support their learning for the next time. So it's kind of both of those pieces. So we were talking before we started recording today about um, your future plans. And obviously your plans this weekend are to finish your dissertation, <laughs> right. essentially. You know, little things. Little things, little things. But as you said, eh, you know, like you do. Um, uh, but you want to you wanna keep teaching in, in the academy. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so why? Um, I mean, it's the best days of teaching are the best days, right, for me. I uh-huh. mean, I there are lots of things that I like to do and get joy out of, but those moments when something is really clicking for students or, you know, where I'm getting to share a thing I'm really invested in and see the way that students are invested in it, whether it's the same way or a different way. Like I don't, there's nothing that really matches that for me. So Mm -hmm. I, I absolutely, yeah, the goal, the, the hope is to continue to do that. Meg, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And hey, a a quick postscript of sorts for today's episode. It was originally recorded a few weeks ago. Since then, Meg has uh, successfully defended her dissertation. So congratulations to her. You can find out more about our podcast by going to our website, ctlt.illinoisstate.edu. Click on the podcast link at the top of the page. You can find out more about today's episode and, of course, how to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. So for Dr. Megan Gregory and all of us here at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology, until we talk again, happy teaching. Happy teaching.